It's election day here in the border city. 16 candidates are vying for six spots on city council. And after months of campaigning, it all comes down to you. New Cap News can up, caught up with a steady stream of voters at Ecole St. Thomas this afternoon. Despite the snowy cold weather, many say they wouldn't miss an election. I never miss voting because I think it's not only your duty, but your right, because in a lot of countries they don't have the privilege of voting like we do. They should come out or they can't complain. If they don't come out and vote, it's their own fault. I've lived here all my life and I really, I really like Lloyd Minster and I, I think it's great to take part in things. I thought we have some pretty smart guys out there. I think things will be good. Now you still have some time to vote today if you haven't done so already. Polls close at 8 o'clock tonight. If you're voting, you need to have a valid government issued photo identification. If you don't have one, you can use two pieces of ID. Both need to have your name on it, one of them containing your home address. The unofficial results will be posted after the polls close tonight. We'll have all the election results tonight on Newcap News at 11 and 11.30. Well, there may be a new crack in the case of a body found near Ranfurly last weekend. Police are investigating the discovery of a human head in Edmonton. Investigators are now trying to determine if the new discovery is linked to the remains that were found in a ditch near Ranfurly on Saturday. A woman walking her dog in an alley found the head inside a cardboard box. The Edmonton Medical Examiner performed an autopsy on Saturday's remains and ruled that death as a homicide. Meantime, the man charged with attempted murder in the shooting of two Mounties near Killam last February is now accused of murdering his uncle. RCMP say Sawyer Robison is charged with second degree murder in the death of Bradford Clark. Clark was found dead in his home near Killam where the two officers were shot. Robison is in custody and is to appear in court on Tuesday. Well, the blanket of snow covering the border city continues to wreak havoc on area roads. The RCMP is asking motorists to avoid driving altogether. But if you have to head out, be extra cautious. Sharing the road with semi trucks that travel our highways frequently could lead to unsafe situations that can be avoided by making good decisions. Driving is a little more difficult thanks to our weather, winter weather, but common sense shouldn't be forgotten while out on the roads. Speed seems to be the worst thing that will put you in the ditch. I'm um, also with the fire department, so I see a lot of accidents with semis. And it's all due to speed. In addition to slowing down, drivers should always remember to make sure their automobile is visible to everyone on the road. One way to do so is by turning on your hazard lights in unfavorable conditions and be cautious of other drivers. Well, uh, you just stay out of uh, the blind spots in these big trucks because believe it or not, they have a lot of blind spots. One is directly behind on the either side there where you can't see in the mirrors. So try and stay out of them if you can. Staying too close to big rigs can cause you to get snow blinded and lose sight of the road. If you don't need to drive, you're asked to stay off the roads and relief is on the way for downtown Lloyd Minster as snow removal is taking place tonight. Meantime, one particularly dangerous area RCMP is asking drivers to avoid is Highway 16 east of Maidstone. Police responded to multiple accidents in the area with close to a dozen semis hitting the ditch and half a dozen rollovers. Luckily, there are no reports of injuries. RCMP cautioned the highway is also very icy from Lloydminster to North Battleford. And the border city's winter wonderland also means a lot of cleanup. Mike Baden takes a look at the responsibility of the community to keep our sidewalks clear and how to stay safe while doing so. Just days before trick-or-treaters are set to hit the streets, the border city is a whiteout. And keeping your sidewalks clear for pedestrians is important. Just the foot traffic on those sidewalks, uh, you know, whether it's a downtown core uh, to uh, frequent businesses or residential areas, uh, if you have seniors out walking, stuff like that, uh, 
families, etc. You, you want to make sure those uh, sidewalks are as clean as possible uh, so they don't have to uh, venture out onto the street to become a pedestrian on, on those traffic lanes. So. After a snowfall, homeowners are given 24 hours to clear sidewalks. If they remain clogged, tickets may be handed out. We do have the authority to uh, uh, approach those property owners. Uh, uh, we have, have the authority to, to write a, a ticket if they won't uh, comply, or we also have the authority to go in and uh, uh, either do it with our own forces or contract it out. Because the snow is not light and fluffy, safety can be a concern. So if you do have any health problems, it's recommended that you don't shovel the snow yourself and get help from someone else. If you're over 45 and if you're a smoker, I would say be extremely cautious because people have had heart attacks while they've been shoveling snow. Um, the joke is get your wife to do it. When going outdoors, make sure to dress for the weather and take breaks in between shoveling. Do it in small chunks. Don't try to take on huge, big piles of, of snow, especially the wet snow. Mike Baden, Newcap News. And this winter weather isn't only hard on us, it's also difficult for our four-legged friends. As Will Cortez explains, a few basic tips can keep your pet warm and even save their life. This time of year brings many challenges for anybody looking to stay warm while outside. Pet owners, especially dog owners, should be cautious when walking their pets in the cold. If they have a dog that's suitable for outside, the double-coated dog, they probably love getting out. They still need their walks. They're probably fine still for a good hour walk. You know, the shorter-coated dogs, the single-coat dogs, the smaller dogs aren't going to be able to last outside as long. A few things to keep in mind with pets. Dogs with short coats are advised to wear dog jackets to keep them warm. Liquids such as antifreeze are common this time of year and leaks and spills should be kept away from pets. Dogs benefit from a larger protein intake. It thickens their coat and gives them more energy to deal with the cold. Animals should not be left outside. This can prove to be fatal for any pet, dogs or cats. At the shelter here this time of year, we see a lot more people bringing cats into us. Sometimes these cats get out by accident. Sometimes uh, a lot of family members, you know, care for their cats, but they believe they should just be able to come and go, and it's just not safe for them to be able to do that. If you're looking for more tips, check their website or contact the SPCA. The SPCA advises people to keep their animals indoor during work hours. Even the dogs that are suitable for living outside, they still need shelter. They still need access to fresh drinking water at all times and insulated dog house. It, it can't be an uninsulated dog house. And they also need to have access to fresh drinking water at all times. Snow is not acceptable. Will Cortez, Newcap News.